Welcome back to Hungry Theologian, helping you taste and see that the Lord is good. Today we're continuing our vegetable series that we're in for the second half of the Easter season. And today we're making a pan-seared zucchini and corn recipe that comes from Kenji Lopez-Alt. I first started making this recipe because a friend of mine said he didn't like eating zucchini because it always ended up mushy and gross. And I don't think anyone likes mushy zucchini. So today's zucchini is going to be, have a nice sear on the outside. It'll be firm with a good bite to it. And between the corn, the onions, garlic, jalapeno, there's going to be tons of flavor. This can be a great side dish or even a main for a vegetarian meal. So let's start cooking. Start off by cutting two zucchini in half, then lengthwise into four long strips. Then cut across each of those strips to end up with cubes. Dice half a large onion or a whole medium onion. I'm using a red onion here because it's what I have, but a yellow onion is fine too. Remove the seeds and ribs from one jalapeno and finely chop it. Finally mince two cloves of garlic and chop about a quarter cup worth of basil leaves. The best way to chop basil is to roll it up or scrunch it into a pile, then you can slice it without just crushing the leaves. Heat a tablespoon of oil until smoking hot in a cast iron or stainless steel skillet, then add three cups of corn kernels. I'm using frozen corn that's been defrosted because fresh corn isn't in season yet when I'm filming this. But if high quality fresh corn is an option for you, just cut the kernels off of a few ears of corn. Leave the corn without stirring to char the first side, and then flip and char the next side. Continue like this for a few minutes until the corn has some char on all sides. Add the onion and jalapeno and cook while stirring until the onion is softened. Then add the garlic, cook for another minute, and remove to a bowl. Rinse the pan to get off this burnt sugar from the corn, dry it well, and return to high heat with a tablespoon of oil until smoking hot. Add the zucchini, then it's the same deal as the corn. Leave it to char on one side, stir it around and char on the next side, then stir and char on one more side. The high heat and short cooking time will sear the outside and soften the zucchini slightly, but it won't end up mushy. Add the zucchini to the corn mixture and stir in the chopped basil, the juice of one lemon, and two tablespoons of olive oil. Season to taste with salt and pepper and enjoy immediately. One of the places that we see vegetables prominently in the Bible is in the book of Daniel, chapter 1. The book of Daniel starts with Jerusalem being invaded by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And this is actually the first of several times that Jerusalem is invaded by Babylon. And in this time, in the book of Daniel, at the very beginning, Nebuchadnezzar ends up carting off Daniel and some of his uh, Israelite companions, as well as some artifacts from the temple in Jerusalem. And these people, Daniel and others, are taken into exile. We hear specifically about Daniel and his three companions, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And we read about the fact that they don't want to defile themselves with the king's food, the meat and wine uh, that would, would have been served in the royal court. And instead, they want to honor their God by eating a special diet. And so Daniel requests this test, that he and his friends will eat only vegetables for 10 days, uh, and see how they compare to those in the court who are eating the royal food and wine. And then after this test happens, after 10 days, Daniel and his friends are healthier and stronger than all the others after they've been eating only vegetables. Well, some people have interpreted this passage to mean that this kind of a diet, a Daniel fast, as some have called it, is perhaps a biblically prescribed diet. Maybe the Bible is telling us that we all should be vegetarian or vegan, that we should only eat vegetables or fruits and vegetables. Well, I don't think what's happening here is some kind of biblical diet. The Bible doesn't really give us those sorts of prescriptions around food. A Daniel fast, eating only vegetables or perhaps only fruits and vegetables for a period of time, could be a great way to practice fasting, if that's something you're interested in doing. But this isn't a prescription for some sort of biblically sanctioned diet that we all need to adopt. Instead, Daniel here is serving as a new sort of Joseph figure. Remember that Joseph, at the end of the book of Genesis, is taken off into Egypt, into Pharaoh's house, and then ends up rising to power. And because of his power in Pharaoh's house, he's able to make a way for his people to be preserved. Daniel here serves as a new kind of Joseph as he's brought into exile ahead of his people 
and rises to power in Nebuchadnezzar's court. The fact that Daniel and his friends here eat only vegetables and end up stronger and healthier than those who are eating the royal food and wine is a sign of the power and the supremacy of Israel's God. And see, through this uh, experience, Daniel becomes a symbol that the Israelites in exile later on can latch onto. As they face opposition for their beliefs, they can look to the story of Daniel and his companions, who even eating only vegetables, remained healthier and stronger than those in the king's court who ate the royal food and wine. Daniel is a sign for the other Israelites to remain faithful to God as they're carted off into exile, no matter what circumstance they're in. The important thing for us to take away from this story isn't that the vegetables themselves made Daniel and his friends healthy, although vegetables are obviously nutritious and good for us, and, as we've seen today, vegetables can be very delicious. But the important thing for us to take away from this story is that it's God who preserves Daniel and his companions. And so as we feast on these vegetable dishes, let's remember that God is the one who strengthens and preserves us. And as we eat these vegetable dishes and we're reminded of Daniel and his companions eating vegetables in Babylon, Let's remember that no matter our circumstances, God is in control and God will preserve us. Even though Daniel and his friends are in exile in Babylon, God continues to provide for them. This vegetable diet is a way that God shows his love and his care for Daniel and his companions as he strengthens and preserves them and keeps them even healthier than the rest of the royal court. So let's continue to feast on vegetables this Easter season. Thank you.